Hello, welcome back to another episode of Mr. Um Rocks. In this lesson, we are going to uh, make some changes to Fat Kids. We're going to add a bank, and that bank is going to actually take keep track of not only of the value of turrets, the cost of turrets, it's going to update, it's going to check to see whether or not we can buy a turret based on how much money you have in the bank, but it's also going to keep start keeping track of life points. So we need to create a new class, and we've not done this outside of the library before, but if I simply go to new and I create a new action script 3 class, I'm going to call this guy point bank. He's going to be used for life points as well as money points. I'm going to say point bank and say OK, and there he is. Point bank is going to take in a default value. I'll say start value is going to be a number, and I'm going to up here create another private field and he is going to be, let's say, a variable, and I'll call that guy start value. Uh, notice that this guy is not extending anything. I'm not going to actually ever create, um, present this on the stage. It's not going to need to be a movie clip or anything like that. Uh, I will create instances of this class, but for right now, all I need to do when I start this guy, let's change this to 1a start value, I will say this dot start value. Uh, is equal to SV. And so now when I create this, notice I want to save it inside my same class. So this is lesson 11. I'm going to say point bank save. And now this guy is ready to have value. But it's not going to do me any good since this is private. I can't really access this or make change to it unless I have getters and setters. And so I'm going to create a uh, set. Actually, let's go back a little bit. Public. Uh, public function, and this public function is going to be um, called uh, set value, and he's not going to take in. Oh, he's going to take in a parameter. I'm sorry, but he's not going to return anything. So let's go ahead and get this all set up. I've got my curly brackets. This guy is going to. Let's do again. We're just going to say uh, v, and we're going to say this guy is equal to a number, and so now even though I have an input parameter here, I'm going to take this value that I bring in to my set value, and I'm going to put this right in here. I'm going to say start value. Oh, actually, I don't like the word start value now that I think about it. I think I'll call this bank value or point value. Yeah, so point value, it could be a bank, it could be life points, whatever it is. And so my start value is right Okay, is right here, but uh, that's just setting the point value of my bank. Okay, so set value, and whenever I call this method uh, for any instance of point bank, I can call this method set value and I can set the value of this particular point bank. Now I need another public function. Um, I'm going to create another public function. I'm going to call this guy uh, get value. And so the way getters and setters work are uh, setters receive input parameters, don't return anything. This guy is going to return a number, but it won't receive anything in. And all it's going to do is if I call this method from another class, it's simply going to return whatever the value is for this particular, uh, for whatever instance I have of this particular class. And so I'm just going to return whatever the point value happens to be and that guy will be set like that. I actually need one other method, and this next method is going to be a little bit more similar to uh, this set value, but instead of set value, I'm going to call this guy change value, and change value is going to take in some value that I want to change, and now I'm going to say point value uh, plus equals, which is the same as saying point value is equal to point value plus C. So if C is negative, it's actually going to decrease point value. If C is positive, it will increase point value. And so I have set value, get value, and I have change value. Okay, good. If I look over here into the Fat Kids class, I can create an instance of this. Let's come back up here, and I create an instance by uh, hitting uh, var again. I don't know if I need to make this public, so right now I'll just go ahead and say var. And I'm going to set this up so that I have, um, let's call it uh, bank value, or actually let's call it game bank. 
game bank. I like that. So game bank is going to be of type, and this is the guy that we just created, and we can see his name is uh, point bank. And so point bank, and I have to use the keyword new when I instantiate an object. So I'll say point bank again, and um, point bank. And uh, I can send it uh, an initial value if I choose to. Let's go ahead and send it 500. And we can go ahead and run that. If I were to trace this right now, that might work. But before, and so I'll trace this in just a moment. Uh, I want to do one other change before I trace this. Uh, if I go over to my Fat Kids class and I look inside the library, I've got this information area. And I started to put in here uh, a static text field, okay, and a dynamic text field. So we're going to come back and get to that in just a minute, but I uh, don't think we're going to call any code on that right now. So let's go and set this up so that Fat Kids at this point is going to simply trace what I am uh, going to see that I have value in here. So I think I'm sending point bank this value. So uh, I'll simply come in here and say uh, game bank and uh, I'll say is equal to and the way that I access that value is I use my getter. So I can say game bank. Remember game bank is the instance of this type of class. And when I create the class, I'm sending in 500. If I want to see what that is, I simply say get a value and uh, close my parentheses there. And that should be good to go. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Uh, now, there's no value here, but it does say game bank is 500. The message I'm getting here says font should be embedded. And we're going to get to that next. But the important thing is, is game bank does have value, and I'm ready to start using that. So if I come over here, I've actually put in this text field, and notice this guy, if I look over here, is a static text field. But one of the things I need to do when I, in, uh, when I place text is I need to embed it into the video. And so I'm just going to say embed all for that guy. For this guy, since I'm just going to have a number here, when I embed him, I'm going to embed uh, all numerals. And I think that's all I need to do there. So now when I run the program, if I save that, run the program, that error message goes away. And notice up here, game bank is equal to 500. And if I were to run this program again, and this time instead of 500, I put in 1500. That's just my default value. But uh, since I use my get value method, it'll tell me whatever the value is inside that method. So let's go back to my FLA file and let's uh, finish making uh, these uh, text fields. I'm going to have bank value. I'm going to put that over here, uh, copy and paste. And this guy is not going to be bank value. This guy is going to be life points. And uh, the way I'm going to set up my game is that when uh, the enemies get to the end of the path. If I haven't killed them, uh, I'm going to lose life points, and that's how I will lose the game. And so life points are good, and now I'm going to create another text field over here, and this guy is going to be, instead of static text, he again is going to be dynamic text. Uh, I need to uh, do the same thing I did before. I need to uh, take this guy and hit the word embed. I'm going to embed uh, all OK. For this guy, I'm going to take him and embed, again, just the numbers. Uh, so I say OK there. So they will get embedded into the movie when I create the movie. And that's a good thing. All right, at this point, I'm going to go to Window Align. And just to make sure these guys line up a little bit more neatly, if I want to lower them down, I can. And uh, I guess that's pretty good. OK, so now this guy had an instance name of bank value. This guy is going to have an, an instance name of uh, life underscore points. And so those two guys are ready to go. OK, now how do I use these guys? Well, if I come back to my Fat Kids class, at one point I have an event listener calling this guy called Update Fat Kids, which I haven't used very much. I also, down below, have an instance of my information area. 
and so at some point if I were to find that uh, information area is gosh where is my information area oh, here it is okay so information area is right here his name is IA short for information area and I'm going to when I call uh, this guy called update fat kids I'm going to call now remember this guy is uh, being called from an event listener it's being called from an event listener that is uh, enter frame so I'm going to call this guy 24 times a second and I'm going to say update info area and uh, that method I have to write so let's go ahead and try that guy uh, let's just grab this code for a moment here I'll put him right below this guy and I will say uh, update info area and what I want to do is I want to change what every every frame I want to check and see if I've changed the uh, value of the bank either the life points or the money bank and uh, I can do that right here so how do I do that well I'm going to use my getters and setters but uh, the way that I do it is I come in here every frame and I'm going to say uh, IA for information area and I've got this guy called uh, let's see I called uh, one guy bank value so I'll say bank value he is a child of the info area and um, I'm going to set the text field so I say dot text this is a dynamic text field and I'm going to set it equal to and uh, I'm going to get my instance of the bank the game bank so I'm going to say game bank and I'm going to set it equal to the game bank dot get value okay so that seems pretty simple however there's a couple little problems here before I can really do this I need to spell things correctly that's helpful and the other thing I need to do is this won't work because this is going to return an integer and text wants a string and so all I have to do in flash to cast a value is use my string function string keyword and come over here put this guy in parentheses and now let's see if this works if I run the program no errors and notice my bank value is 1500 that worked just fine although they are very spread apart I don't like that let's go back change this guy if I come into my library and I find my information area this guy seems to be way over I think I'll just change his justification same thing with this guy change his justification and now if I run the program it should look a little bit better okay good so it's getting whatever I have now I can do the same thing exactly with my other value and so if I come back into fat kids instead of just having a game bank um, I also want a guy for life points and so instead of game bank I'm gonna use the same class remember this is like a blueprint and game bank and life points are gonna be two different instances so I'll say life points and uh, I'll change his number to let's say 100 and you change this guy back to 500 and so life points is now an instance a different instance of point bank when I construct this instance it's gonna send him 100 I should by the way get uh, another value up here so trace uh, this guy I'm going to now trace uh, life points so I'll say life points here and I'll say life points here and it'll put that up on the screen but also down here when I do my uh, info area I'm gonna do the same thing I did up here uh, with this guy except now instead of game bank I'm gonna go ahead and get the value of life points and I'm going to take that value and say uh, whatever I had here I forget what the field was called let's assume it was life underscore points and let's see if that all works and now notice I get 500 and 100 I get bank values 500 and life points is 100 and I'm ready to go ahead and change those values now I wanted to make one other little change before we uh, go too much further uh, right now I want to go into uh, open my tile do you remember where we created a turret well right here I'm creating a turret if a couple of conditions are met so first of all 
if t does not equal null. But I'm going to add another tur or another condition here. I'm going to say if tur does not equal null and I want to check and see if I have enough money. And so to do this, I've got to check two things. I want to go ahead and compare the cost of the turret. Let's say compare the turret cost uh, to available funds. And so if I don't have enough money in my bank, I do not want to create this. And so what I'm going to say is something along the lines of if, so how do I get, let's see, I want to, I want to take my uh, turret cost. How do I get the cost of the turret? Well, to do that, I need to come over to turret and make sure I have a get cost. So let's open up my turret, uh, come down here, say turret, and notice that uh, when I created this guy, I set it up so he gets a cost. I'm sending it into cost field, and down here, let's get rid of this guy. Don't need him anymore. I already have a guy called get range. If I take this same function or method, and I simply paste him in here, I can take, uh, instead of just get range, I can now write a new method called get cost. So that guy is ready to go. And instead of returning the range in this method, this method is going to return the cost. Okay, so now I can check to see what the cost of a particular turret is. And so right in here I can say, uh, I'm dealing with uh, turret T. So T, I can say simply T dot get cost, get cost. Uh, and that's going to give me the cost of the turret. Now the other thing I need to do is find out how much money is in the bank. And the money in the bank is actually in a guy on the root. So I need to go ahead and go back to the root. And I need to say dot. And what did I call this guy back in Fat Kids? Well, the bank, I need to see if I have enough money in the bank. My bank back in my Fat Kids document class, which is the root for this game, game bank, is what I want to check. And so all I need to do is use my getter again. I'm going to say dot get value, or I'll say dot game bank dot get value. And I'll make sure that this is greater than or equal to that value. Hmm. So that's the basic idea. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. It says it doesn't like this static type game bank. And so if I come back to my point bank, let's make sure that this guy is public. Uh, he is public. Let's come back here to fat kids and let's make this guy public. And so now if I run the program, still doesn't like it. He says this guy and I've spelled this way wrong, so let's change this to value. Try it one more time, and now it looks like it's working. So if I run this, he lets me purchase my turret. Okay, I'm going to stop there for now, and we'll get back in the next uh, in the next lesson. We are going to uh, set it up so that uh, when the enemies get to the end of the path, we're going to lose life points, and when uh, I don't have enough. Uh, money, I should have something else happen. So I'll add an else statement down here. But that's it for today. Bye-bye.